I wanted to readdress some of the issues that I had when I attempt to freeze dry some food using Harvest Rife's new software version 24. And I did so with some vacuum leaks around 1000 uh, millitor. But I wanted to see how close I could get to the threshold that vacuum right uh, has made at 1500 millitor. So I jumped back in and reconfigured my freeze dryer and I had some better success uh, the second time around. And I'd like to go through that and review some of the things that you can do if you're suffering a vacuum leak and you still want to be able to do some freeze drying. So what I did to slow things down, I went into custom and I took my dry temperature, which I normally have at 130, and I brought that down to 100. And then instead of fast mode, I picked normal. And that ended up doing a lot better job at a larger leak at 15, hundred millitors than what I would normally run. So if you have a problem with vacuum leaks, try that. I was able to use the same foods as in my first uh, trial experiments with the exception of strawberries. I did not have any strawberries, so I substituted uh, sour cream for strawberries. So I had corn, sour creams, and beans, mushrooms, apples, and bananas and one thing about these bananas these bananas were really really ripe bananas and i mean they they're almost black so it'll be interesting to see how these bananas actually fared uh, with the prior uh, issues with the apples i had a lot of these uh, deep lines throughout the apples when i uh, used the other fast mode at 130 degrees and I had onions, once again, a slice of ham, some shredded cheddar cheese, my good old potatoes, tomatoes, and avocados. And avocados, when I did my previous experiment, experiments, these kind of came out looking like human ears. So I'm hoping that uh, slowing down the rate of sublimation and, and cooling the temperatures will make this batch run a lot better. This is kind of like a high altitude graph of my freeze drying experience at 1500 millitor. You can see that when I first started the batch, I, it was kind of hard to kind of dial in to get my freeze dryer to behave at 1500. But after a few minutes, I was able to pretty much maintain a vacuum leak right at or just a little bit above 1500 millitor. Now, if we zoom in on this line and just take a look at the dry cycle, you can see a little bit more detail. So here's the data and the graph of what happens at 1500 millitor. Now, just to let you know, what I was able to do that came out a lot better is I changed my mode from uh, fast mode, which I often do, down to normal mode. Normal mode is a little bit more gentle with food when it comes to freeze drying. And I took my temperature from 130 degrees uh, down to 100 degrees so that I, it wouldn't dry quite as fast. That way I was able to kind of control the rate of drying and not dry it so fast as with my previous video. So once again, you can see where I was trying to make the adjustment down to 1500 millitor, but once I got there, you can see the nice uh, even cycles of the uh, free of the dry cycle as it went along. And if you take a look at the comparison bar here, if I can grab this out here, uh, let's stop it right there. So you can see that as the shelf temperatures increased, you can see that the vacuum decreased. And as the shelf temperatures decreased, the vacuum increased. In my previous video, this line was almost horizontal. It was like, it really didn't show any cycle, but on the normal mode at a lower temperature, I was able to get a more concise uh, freeze drying uh, picture there. 
So if you're if you do suffer a little bit of a vacuum leak, uh, change your settings. Uh, go to the go, go up to the custom button and change your settings from fast back to normal. Drop your temperature a bit. I went down to 100, and go ahead and try that and see how it turns out. Now, with that being said, we're going to take a look at the food that I ran through for this particular batch. These are some of the foods that I rehydrated from my uh, sample of a large vacuum leak on version 24. The mushrooms, onions, potatoes, I didn't worry about, but these are some of the ones I wanted to highlight. Now, the sour, sour cream came back really good. If you work it too much, you can actually break the oils out of the solids and it will separate on you. The uh, avocados came back a lot better. In my first video, I did a version 24. The avocados kind of came out like looking like a human ear. But because I lowered the uh, temperature of the shelves down to 100 degrees instead of 130 degrees, and I put it on standard mode instead of fast mode, it took a lot longer, almost twice as much time, to freeze dry these foods, but they came out a little bit better. The bananas were kind of interesting. Uh, the bananas and the tomatoes, the apples, all had fruit fresh. But after rehydrating the bananas, they kind of went to a, a darker color. They still taste okay, but a little bit disappointed in how the bananas rehydrated. The uh, tomatoes came back pretty good. I mean, really good color. Tomatoes, uh, lettuce, cabbage, when they rehydrate, they just don't come back being crispy. They're kind of well, they, they kind of like they're wilted a little bit. The taste is still there, but not a problem. Uh, ham, meats come back really, really good. This meat, I mean, it's just like the meat it was once before. No problem, you can't taste any difference there. Now, the uh, string beans, they came back pretty decent, although they're kind of limpy limpy, if you want to call it that way. They're kind of like the tomatoes. They just don't come back in their really good uh, firm uh, texture. Apples, not a problem with apples. They're more like a cooked apple now. They're not as crispy as they once were when they were dry. But this, this something like this would be easy to make out of an apple pie. Corn came back really, really good. Uh, no problems with the corn. Corn is much better than the string beans. Now the cheese. The cheese can be difficult to uh, hydrate. I have a lot of cheese, uh, shredded cheese, in my inventory, and it's primarily a component uh, ingredient for uh, cooking. To bring back cheese by itself, it's really difficult to rehydrate. Usually I will use a spray bottle to rehydrate it or put the cheese between two wet paper towels because it has to the cheese has to take the moisture back really, really slow so it doesn't turn into cheese soup. But the colors are better, the, the textures are better, the appearance are better. With, uh, with a large vacuum leak, this vacuum leak was almost 1500 millitor, and it just, and going on the standard uh, mode instead of fast mode, it worked out a lot better with the exception of the bananas. The bananas were really, really ripe when I first dried them, and that could be one of the problems. So if you do have a vacuum leak and you can't just figure it out, you might want to go with version 24, switch it from fast mode to standard mode, drop the temperature, say somewhere about 100 to 120, try it that way and see how your food comes out until you can fix your freeze dryer. But I hope you learned something. Thank you for your time. Please subscribe, and as always, go forth and freeze dry the world.